Lots to do with the Jaguar today because I've got to do the injectors. And I thought, while I'm at it, I might as well do the half moon gaskets on the back of the engine because they are smoking. But I thought before I do that, I should probably test for other leaks. And that's where RLD4 comes in, along with this UV torch. Put it into your oil. And then we have to run the engine for about 20 minutes. It doesn't look too shabby. There is a little bit right down the back here, which I assume is the half moon. It's really hard to see, but there's a banjo bolt. That banjo bolt is glowing green. So that is obviously a leak up there. So now that I've got the fuel pressure gauge on over here, I'm going to get in the car, turn the key with the fuel pressure relay in. Oh, it is spurting fuel. That is not good. I'm looking for the gauge to stay around the 40 to 50 mark. 40. There you go, fuel pump's fine then. I had to cut into this line coming into the rail. On these cars, they don't have a Schrader valve, so you had to cut into it and then put your own little one in. So I've got to take this injector rail off all of the injectors. I'm also gonna take these cam covers off because I need to do the half moons behind the cam shaft. And that means that I need parts to replace, such as gaskets and intake gaskets, etc. And that is where Simply Performance Jaguar Specialists have come in handy getting these parts for me. Those are the rubber half moon gaskets. They're the ones that you get from OEM. But I have actually upgraded these. They are gonna be aluminium, which is pretty cool. And it means that these won't have to be changed because the rubber does dry up over time and perish. So I'll probably just sell those on to someone else so they can do it if they want to have the OEM ones. We then have these intake valve gaskets. And then of course there is the cam cover gaskets. They go this way, this is the back of the engine. This is where the half moons sit. I've also got these as well. They are the Jaguar emblems to go on the camshaft covers. And so first things first, before I take off the injector rail, I need to depressurize the fuel system because I have just pressurized it by playing around and getting the fuel pressure. Let's go into here. Let's take out this relay and crank it battery off and we're good to go. Ow! Oh, I was right on the antenna, right in my soft piece. So as you can see, there is quite a mixture of different tools that we're gonna need for this job. It might be a bit subject to change. I've kind of just collected what I think I'm gonna need. This is the main thing you're gonna need if you're doing the V12, which is this injector hose bundle, we'll call it, from Mr. Injector UK. So as you can see, it comes with everything you're gonna need to do your injectors, including it will cut to the right length with the right kind of hose that you need for today's fuels. They even send you, as you can see, a little information seat to tell you everything you need to know. There's also another one right here. Handy tips to help you fit in your service parts to your injectors. And this thing here comes with a Mr. Injector kit. And that is to go onto here, and then you can push your pinnacle cap onto your injector. You then have this Mr. Injector bit here. I think this is to do the inlet and the outlet as well. Just a bit of extra hosing and some clips. Super glue, as we mentioned, to stick the little black ring onto the clamp. This screw here, you can use pretty much any screw, will go up into the filters within the injectors. Screw in and then pull them out. As you can see, I've got a little hacksaw there that is to cut away into the old ferrules to get them off. I still don't know how to say that word. Grips, I think I'll probably end up using those at some point for something. Obviously for taking the hoses off, cutting through the old hoses. This is to get the injector kind of bolts off so you can get the injector rail out. This is some hose that I bought from elsewhere. It's for the line that runs in behind the fuel pressure regulator and then up the other side, because I'm gonna kind of make shift my own instead of paying a 70 odd pound. So that will kind of go in there. I shall show you how to do that too. This is from Advanced Fluid Solutions. I think that's like 13 quid. And just in case you're wondering, 141 pound 30 for the Mr. Injector bits. As you would expect with the V12 engine, there's quite a lot to get off to get this out. Firstly, I took off the pipe running over to each bank. Three Jubilee clips hold it in place. I'm going to kind of draw out on my whiteboard what all of it looks like. It's quite self-explanatory, but it just helps when I'm further down the line and I'm going, oh my God, what have I done? I really hope that I don't watch this video back and go, oh my God, I'm going bald on the top of my head or anything. So next thing is taking off all of these connectors. They're coming out quite easily. Three, whatever number I'm on now. That one, right, all the electrics are out. Now I need to undo these nuts. After removing the nuts holding the injector brackets in place, I removed the cruise control bezel. Using glass jars, I kept nuts and bolts together, making note of where they come from. Given the rail a wiggle, I worked it loose, undoing just one more connection and it was out. Come out, there we go. I'm going to get some masking tape and put in where those injector holes are. I need to remember the orientation of all of the electrical connectors to line up to the connections. Connector goes 
two, three, four, five, and then forward. And then the other side mimics that side. Forward, forward, forward. The next job is to cut the injectors loose from the rail, keeping them in order. Removing my fuel pressure gauge and collecting the brackets for safekeeping. A bit of WD-40 and a strong arm, I got this hose loose from the rail and the same on the other side. The black plastic comes off, not sure what it's for. And lastly, the wire comes off. And then onto hacksawing, a timely part of the process, which I soon realized can be done much quicker, four hoses later. So this is the last one that I have to do on this rail. And I realized after doing about four of them, that actually there's a much easier way of doing it than using a hacksaw. Slicing down to one side, very slowly coming across not to hit this middle metal piece here. And just do that a little bit, rip it to the side, just to kind of create a bit of a split. And then use my soldering iron and put it just in the middle of where I've cut. And as you can see, it is melting the rubber. This is a lot less labor intensive than using the hacksaw. As you can see, just work on that corner still. And then I can twist it around and off it comes. And there we have it, one rail without all the extra bits on. And so as you can see, it is a bit of a state. It is going to need a bit of a clean up. And I think that cleaning this up will just give that engine bay a little bit of gleam that it needs. First things first to refurbish these injectors is to get a little flathead underneath there and pull out this rubber piece. This rubber piece is something that you do change as part of the service. So I'm just going to pull it out from underneath this metal ring. Let's just pull that down here, straight off the end. That allows me to remove the metal one. And then I'm actually gonna put this rubber one back on. And this is why, because I want to put this injector into a bench vise, tighten up onto the rubber piece and not harm the injector itself. So using my Stanley, I'm gonna very, very carefully cut into the rubber hose. Okay, that's pretty good. With my soldering iron, which is actually extremely hot, even on my hand right now, because I've left it on. Go down in here, melt it all away. There we go, we're starting to make progress. <gasps> oh no, I've melted the top of my plug. That was a lapse in judgment, that was. And then that should come out. Like that. And the ring will come off. And now our next job is to get the filter out. I'm gonna use a screwdriver just to screw it in a little bit more. And then put my grips around it. And there is the filter, as you can see. And the next thing is to spin the injector around. I'm gonna remove this seal here. As you can see there, yeah, that's in need of changing. You never know how old these are gonna be. And then it's time to cut this pinnacle cap off. And this is where you've got to be quite careful because you don't want to damage the end of the injector. And you also don't want to damage this kind of seal that's on part of the injector here. I think it's a seal or a bit of metal. I'm not quite sure, but you definitely don't want to damage any of this because some of this you aren't going to be replacing. Some of it is part of the unit. So you see there how I've just cut that and it's loosened it, which will reveal your pinnacle. That's the thing that sprays the fuel into the car. So you've got to make sure that that doesn't get damaged. And that brings us on to the next step. So after getting your injector to that point, you now need one of these, a quick grip with detachable pad. And what we do is we put a little hole in here. We super glue this, which comes with the kit, by the way, from Mr. Injector UK. That goes in the center around the hole that we drill. And what you can then do is you can then put your injector in here and you close up like this, pushing on the pinnacle cap and also pushing the filter in. Having the hole in the middle stops you from hurting the end of the injector. Then we get the super glue, about there, I would say. Leave that to dry. And then when that is dry, that'll go on the end of there and we'll push our injector together. This is the new pinnacle cap, goes over the top and the new filter goes into the top. We then line up the pinnacle cap in like that. Just squeeze it like that. The cap clips on and then the filter will also go in. New cap on, new filter in, and then it's time to actually change these rubber pieces on this injector. Now that I've done this one, I'm gonna do all of them now, cause I know what I'm doing. So I've got another 11 to go.
And that is why you have to be really careful with a 300 degree soldering iron. Even though repetitive, this job is actually quite easy and one of the most important jobs on the XJS V12 to prevent engine fires. And there are all of the injectors that we have taken out. We've taken all the hoses off and all these bits and bobs. What we need to do is we need to put all of these on, but I'm gonna wait for a minute because first I want to test them with my new tester to see what condition they're in. And also, even though I knew I was gonna be painting all of this, I forgot to order the paint. So I'm waiting for paint. So I can't do any of this because I've got to do this first, then I can put the injectors back on after testing them. So we're actually going to spend a bit of time removing more parts from the engine bay because I need to change the half moon seals. So I need to take these off. Then I need to take off the cam covers here because at the back, this is where it was leaking oil. This is also a great time to remove your leads, coil and other parts in the valley to be able to clean up all the gunk. I got part way through doing this and then started removing the induction manifold nuts instead, removing the metal pipe on the rear for easier access. Off comes the ignition amplifier held on by two bolts. Off come the two Jubilee clips holding the hose to the fuel pressure regulator. And so does this hose, which is split and I need to reorder another one whatever that is, as does the PCV breather hose and the screws holding the fuel cooler. Coolant and air temp sensors out, this hose off, and out she comes, kind of. A secret spring makes an appearance. That's one side off, <laughs> now to do all the same for the other side. Using blue roll to block off the holes left behind reduces debris entering the engine. I soon hit a bump in the road, I needed a PZ4 to remove this, so I carried on with the cam cover on bank B. These two were an absolute bugger because of everything that was in the way. I had to end up using this here, which I found lying around, with a 10 mil on the end and kind of just put it on and just take it off, move it. There is another one here. Nice, 13 mil like the rest of them were. Let's just undo that one. There's that with a washer. So that wire there goes underneath the two bits of the bracket. Nice and easy does it. Doesn't look too bad, a little bit dark, but no sludge or anything like that, so that's good. And right at the back there is what we're going to be doing on both sides. You see that little shape in there? That is where that uh, half moon goes. That needs changing, and then you've got the banjo bolts in the back too. I'm going to move on to my fuel lines because like, this is the one that goes over the two banks and not in the best nick. Yeah, I think I'm going to change those while I'm at it. This is the one that goes to the fuel pressure regulator on <laughs> bank B and look at the state of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually horrendous. It says on here, 11 first 88. I believe that means this was from 1988. So of course, that was when the car's four years old. Now it's nearly 40 years old. And then there's also this little one here, which goes to, I think this is bank A. Yeah, is this, this is the bank A fuel pressure regulator hose. And then this one is the one that goes beside bank B. Uh, where I put my tea in for my fuel pressure. Mr. Injector actually sends you these, but I'm not sure exactly which part they were for. Like, were they for these or were they for another line I've not seen yet? I'm not quite sure. And of course, the reason that I haven't done these injectors yet and put the new stuff on it is simply because, one, I'm going to be spraying the rail, so I can't put the stuff for the rail on it yet. And then I'm also going to be testing these injectors. I don't want to put it all on. I forgot to take it all off. Cutting the hose to size now mean they'll be ready for after painting the parts. And now prep time.
And so I've been very busy spray painting all the parts in that silver. And I think that's gonna really, really make the engine bay look that much better. Now, back onto the injectors, because I think I've worked out how to use this machine. But I do have a problem. And that problem is that my injectors will not fit in there comfortably. I've got loads of different attachments here to make these different sides, but none of them fit. This is the closest I can get. But even with an O-ring on there, it's not gonna fit in there and not leak. So I have devised a bit of a plan. So as you can see, that is my injector number one, which I am now gonna put another seal, the same as the one on the bottom here, on the top, and then an O-ring. Hopefully, that will do the job, and that will mean it will sit in there. Let me do it with the other three, and then we'll get it in and see what we can do. Okay, and then this thing goes over the top. This one goes on there, and then we put these in. So let's have a look at this. Power switch. Idle speed test. Okay, let's try this. These two here are filling up a little bit quicker than this one and that one. They just probably just need to clean. They've been sat in the car for a long time. So I've now taken the injectors out and I think I'm gonna try and work out how to clean them in this bath-like thing back here. And I have this seafoam motor treatment, which is supposed to mix 50% with petrol. So I've put a 50% seafoam in and 50% petrol. So is it just this then, cleaning switch? I don't actually know. I've got zero idea if that's doing what it should be doing. Yeah, you see, he's building up quite a bit compared to the others. That one's a little bit more, but that one's a lot more. Yeah, he is really, really going for it. You see the difference between them? It's still not doing it. Let's get that in the bath. Leave that to clean that for a minute, and we will see whether that makes our number three work on setting four, which is high-speed test. Look at all of that crap floating around in there, look. Right, let's try the high-speed test again. It's now working. Just putting it in that little bath thing just shocked the dirt out of the injectors a bit. So on bank A, there is quite a bit to take off. I finally got my PZ4. That is what you need to undo this screw that sits on top of bank A here and holds whatever the hell this is in. I've got no idea what that is. That then comes away from these two here. I think one went above, one went below. Can't be quite sure. That is why I'm starting to record everything I'm taking off of bank A, because it's quite a bit. This here, you might just be able to see there. There is a little vacuum by the looks of it, a vacuum line that goes onto the back of the bank here and it goes onto the top piece here, right there. What I'm doing is I'm recording all of this a bit more in depth for this bank because it looks like it's gonna be a bit more confusing as to what needs to come off. There's also a vacuum line on the back here that needs to come off. That's the size, fits nice and snug, that's a 14. There's the bolt on the washers. This one here, which goes directly below the one you've, I've already taken out, that one comes off. You see the sensor there? You need to unplug that one and plug the couple of lines from it. Two-tone line goes to the right-hand side as I'm looking at it now, and the black one goes to the left. There's also some plugs underneath this bank, electrical plugs that I think, by the looks of it, yeah, are gonna have to come out. This one closest to me right now has to come out. Okay, there's one more line plugged in somewhere that I can see. I forgot on the other side there was this spring. There's a sensor here as well, on the right hand side of this throttle body. So that line goes all the way down here. This unused line's put together, so I wonder whether it snapped at some point. Uh, there's a hose just down here coming off the back of this air filter, and then it's got like a, a bit like a fuel line kind of thing there. I'm just going to undo that. Glad I uh, recorded this so I can check it all later to see what I did. Just in case of the wiring is all tangled up in my, uh, whatever this thing is here. Oh, I see, and it goes to the back of this. And there's two lines there. I'm going to mark one. I don't know if you can still see this, but mark that. And that should just come out. All right, I'm just going to pull it out, bugger it. That's the wiring out of the way. Loads of lines in the back of this one. There wasn't so many in the other one. As you can see, there is loads of stuff under here. This one comes across to a vacuum line of some sort. I'm gonna have to just pull that off. Oh, bloody hell, I can't even pull it. Goes into the bottom of the uh, ignition coil by the looks of that. I'll have to take this whole lot off in one go, I think, because there is, you can see it there on the side here, there's a bolt. I might better get that bolt off and then take the whole lot away, hopefully. Oh my God, they've not made this easy. So off that bolt comes underside of the manifold near the bulkhead. There is a washer and a bolt that comes away. I'm gonna put that bolt 
upright next to my driver side wiper. This vacuum line can come off, pop this uh, bolt off here, that should relieve that bolt, washer, little one and the bigger one. And that goes into that. I'm gonna put that right there, next to the bolt for the arch. And that is then attached to this one. So that one needs to come out too. One more hose right at the bottom. There we go. Come on, that should be it. Oh, that's it. And the last bit, so I know where it is later, was the hose that goes on there. That was this one. Last bolts out of the front of the unit. This bracket here comes from the front of the camshaft cover. Cutting off the coolant pipe zip ties I put on in a previous video, this gave the pipe a slight give, but it wasn't enough. Fuel pressure regulator out the way. Loosening this bolt here allows the part to swing out of the way. Sensor here is taken off. Tuck the wiring around the front of the cam cover. This electrical connector then separates, zip tie is cut, wire taken out the way of the cam cover, and off it comes. Gasket 2. Revealing the suspected source of the leak, the rubber half moon gasket, which shrink and dry up over time. Covering the open engine reduces the risk of anything falling into it, and just look how much there is in this engine bay. Wow, the amount of wiring in this thing is mad. To be able to take all of this off is just crazy to get out the camshaft cover and the induction manifold so that I can get two, which is right back here. Honestly, there's no space at all in these things. Right at the back here, there is the space for this to go. This is one of the half moon gaskets and I believe this is what is leaking. And it is a bit oily on the bottom. Do you like my silver shoes as well? Beautiful from spraying all of this yesterday and it looks unbelievable. That's gonna look so cool going back in the car. But of course I need to do the other side now because I've just taken those two out from this side. I have finally worked out what I'm doing wrong here. If you push that down, these will actually fill up and you get an actual reading, a proper reading rather than just it kind of sitting at zero. Put it quite equally, that's good. That is a good sign. Well, there you go. So as you can see, this here is about 85. This is about 87, 85, 86. It's all very close. And then you can, how nice and simple, eh? Why didn't I work that out yesterday? The fact that I cleaned them yesterday in the bath in the back, well, that's obviously made a difference anyway. So it was worth doing that yesterday, even if I didn't do this correctly yesterday. And there we have it guys. I'm so happy with how this has turned out because all of these are around the 90 mark and all the other injectors were around the 90 mark on the high spray volume. I've gone through the idle spray, the medium spray, the idle speed test, the high speed test. I've gone through loads of it, accelerating tests and every single time the four that are in the rail are matching up. And then the ones that come in afterwards and doing the same tests are also extremely similar levels in here. So I think the injectors are absolutely fine. I think they're working perfectly and hopefully we'll get these back in the rail, get everything back together and the car will be running sweet. And so I've received the banjo bolts and the half moons and now I can start giving it a go. This should stop the engine smoking and if it doesn't then I'm gonna have to take it all off and do it all again. So that's what we're gonna be putting the half moves into, these little pieces in here in the back of the cams. And you can just see the banjo bolt in behind. This side's got plenty of room. Yeah, the other side, not so much. I can just about get my hand in to the half moon in there. How I'm gonna to get to the banjo bolt, I do not know yet. Um, that's kind of a to be decided. I am thinking as well, it might make sense to start taking some stuff out of the center to try and make a bit more room to be able to move stuff around and also to be able to clean it all out because it's extremely dirty in there. I think I'll remove the coil first, that looks nice and simple. 
take the leads out. It will just kind of give me a bit more space to work with and I won't have so much stuff in the way having to move it back and forth. I'm not gonna record all of it because I know how to put it all back. I think that's the smartest thing to do. So this coil here, one screw out. This has definitely been the biggest job I've ever done on a car. There's the coil of this uh, throttle pedestal thing, which yep, will come straight off. All right, into the ignition amplifier, you have these two here, black casing, and I've got a red pen over them. And then you have the more whiter casing, which I'm gonna draw blue across. There we go, ignition amplifier, this white block that goes together from that same wiring. I'll put a big blue one across those as well. And that comes over to all of these leads here. And then we can put that one over there, a bit more out of the way. That, from what I remember, went under bank A, something like this okay so i remember myself there's a block at the back here that goes into the wiring and this runs forward the floor pedestal looks like it's just held in by these bolts 11 mil this bolt i've just undone to the left of the pedestal closest to me holds in the wiring here on a bracket i am going to remove it because i don't want to get confused so that holds these two in position all right these connectors need to make sure that i'm on the right one one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so this vacuum line comes around and it loops down into this metal piece coming off the back of the distributor and that sits on the vacuum line there. So that goes there. And then this one will come right out below bank A, if I remember rightly. That goes to the ignition amplifier. That's got the blue and red lines in there and then this piece coming off. That will go over the top of bank B. I can remove the cap. That's fine, I know how to remove the cap. There's these little screws either side with a little washer. I'm gonna put them there on my toolbox for a minute. Second screw out, and there's a third one around there. And that can just go around here for a minute. Although I've got a bit more room now taking that cap out. This is the bolt on the left of the pedestal as I'm looking at it. Okay, that bolt's out with the washer. This one has two washers, a little one and a big one. And then the one around the back. That should be all of them then. Okay, the pedestal should be loose now. Just removing this final bolt in the back corner. And this should lift up and out without any issues. This is all the wiring here for the throttle thing, uh, whatever you call it. Okay, so this one here goes into the top of the oil pressure sender, I think that's what it is. That one will just come out the top of it, like a pinky with a brown line in it. White head and then a black sheath, we'll call it. This one goes to the coil. These are already marked on them. One, two, that's not very obvious, so I'm just gonna update that. That's starting from the back, so one, two, three. Wow, that plug is buggered. It's not even that old, because I changed them myself when I first ever got the car, which was nearly, nearly two years ago. And so, as you can see, that is much cleaner than it was previously, and this is just some of the crap that I got out. Look at that. It's not perfect, but I, I'm not someone that is really like, oh yeah, let's get it absolutely pristine because that's just not me. I'm just, I'm not that interested in it being 100%. One thing I did notice is this spark plug. Because you may be able to see that, but that was changed about 18 months to two years ago. And that is looking horrendous. I, I don't quite know why. Just from a quick look, they look absolutely fine. So why is that one like that? I'm gonna to have to replace it, aren't I? Oh, wow. Look at the state of that one. So having seen that plug that looked a little bit funny, I've taken them all out, all 12. Look at the state of these, oh my God. Look at the plastic, what? What is going on here? It's like something's happened. They've all just shot up and all the ceramics been destroyed. I just don't understand it at all. What would cause them to be like this? Look at the state of them. So as you can imagine, I have kind of blocked all the plugs up and I had to be really careful when I was taking the plugs out because I had to hoover out the extra pieces that had been left in the, in the ports there. I undid the two screws on the back here and there was one screw in the front. Um, there should be two, there's only one and I wedged that up to make it a bit easier to get to these front plugs. The front plugs when you buy an XGS always tend to have not been done because people can't be bothered to do this. Um, it's really not that hard, but they, they just can't be bothered. It looks a lot cleaner in there than it did, still needs a few bits, and especially under there to be cleaned up. I shall do that. And now, really, we need to look into doing the half moons and the banjo bolts on the back. As you can see, I've made a bit more room so I can get to it, but that one down there is still gonna be really hard to get to because it is a lot further back 
than this one at the front. So while I wait for my spark plugs to arrive, I'm gonna start doing the banjo bolts on the back of these cam things here. So this is what you have to order. This is actually an uprated one that came from Lithuania. It's a bit longer. I've heard the threads are slightly different and it comes with two thicker copper washers. That goes right in the back there and hopefully I'll be able to get that done quite easily. I've heard that they're 16 millimeters, so let's give it a go. It's not, they're 17. Let's try and get them out. I'm not gonna be able to use a socket because there's not enough space between there and there to get to it. Maybe the originals are a 16 because that's going around and it's not bringing the bolt. Maybe the upgraded ones are 17 and these are 16. Okay, these are 16. So as you can see, that's the bolt there that I'm undoing. That has a washer, which is, I can already tell, is a lot thinner than what I've got as a replacement there. And then another washer will be crushed between the banjo bolt and the cylinder head. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Be nice and careful with it. And there's that one out. And then if I pull the banjo out a bit, I should be able to get the other washer off. In fact, I might need to put my phone down to do this. Yep, I got it. And there's that one, which you can see is paper thin. Well, fortunately, that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be to get that one off. I think the other side's gonna be a lot harder, but I'll savor this moment for now. And now that you're down level, you can see there's quite a difference between the two. This one is considerably longer. It's also got a head that's considerably bigger, a mill bigger, and look at the size difference in the washers. Yeah, that was paper thin and that was a lot bigger. That will hopefully mean that we're less likely to get leaks. So I've actually put some clean gloves on to make sure that we're as clean as possible for putting these in. So what is a banjo bolt? Well, on the back of the engine, there's something like this that's hollow that allows oil in and it comes into here. The banjo bolt goes in like this and you see the hole there? That allows the oil to go inside the bolt, out the end of the bolt and into the back of the engine. What I need to do is I need to have one washer on this side, like so, and then another washer on the inside here. That is the new banjo bolt's gone in. I'm not quite sure how tight to do it. So I've just done it tight and then a little bit more tighter just to tighten it up. The next one is over here. That's gonna be a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna do that now actually while I'm thinking about it and while I've done the other one. So I've got this second one out. That wasn't actually as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, it's a bit tighter than the other one, but it's not horrendous. As you can see, it is quite a bit dirtier and wetter than the other one. I believe this is the one that was leaking. It's on that side that it smokes. So I reckon that this is what needed to be sorted out. As you can see, the washer on this one is actually kind of now part of the bolt. There you go, I've just got it off. So that was really tight in there. And then this one was also stuck to the inside of the banjo piece. And um, I couldn't find it, I thought there was no washer on it, but I ended up using some scissors and just kind of scraping it off the surface. And there it is. But as you can see, that was very, very wet. And I reckon that that is the one that was leaking. As you can see as well, my hands are a lot dirtier than before with this one. I think that tells you everything you need to know. And no, by the way, I haven't been measuring my penis. Because if I had been, it would have been more like... I was in fact measuring the bolts because I was just interested to see what size they were. Right, let's go and fit this one. And so it's exactly the same premise again and hopefully it won't be too much of an issue. Yes, space is tight in here, a lot tighter than the other side. I think even though it's more of a reach, it might make sense for me to do it from over here. Oh no, my washer. Cannot lose it. Let me just go and get my magnet. I assume that copper's magnetic. Fuck off. Really? Do I not know science? Right, it's kind of in, but it isn't turning. I need to make sure that washer's there. I, I can't actually tell. I'm actually losing my mind over this banjo bolt because I don't know if you can see it in there, which you probably can't, it's like impossible to see, but there's the bolt. You can just see the head there, there's the bolt. But the problem is that the bolt goes here and the hole is about here. And I can't push it that way. So I can't get the bolt in. I just, I just don't understand it. Like it's come out, the bolt's come out. I put a new bolt in and now the whole thing won't reach the hole that it needs to reach. I just don't, I just don't get it. The way to explain it would be like this. So here's the bolt, right? And you've got your washer, your washer, and then here's the banjo piece here, right? That's supposed to go into a hole. Problem is, the hole is here, not quite that far, like more like here. It won't push this way to go into there. So I'm just gonna leave that for a minute. I've asked on one of the Jaguar pages on Facebook to hopefully see if someone knows of what my issue could be. Like I've even undone the other banjo bolt in case it gave a bit of slack to pull that way and it just hasn't. I just, I just don't get it, I don't know. I can't do the half moons yet because 
I want to do those after I've done the banjo bolts because I keep knocking the area where the half moons would go. So it'd be stupid to put them in just to knock them out and lose them down the back of the engine. Um, which I did drop one of the copper washers, but I got my um, air compressor, as you can see here. And then I just blew out in behind where it fell down and then it came down onto the floor. So yeah, I did save the copper washer. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to try and crack on with my hoses because the hoses need doing. And also, so do the injectors. The injectors need doing as well, because I've not finished those yet. They can then go on the rail, actually, because the rail has dried out. They look really good, don't they? As you can see, I've got most of the rail on, and now I'm going to show you how to do it. This is where it comes in important that you remember which way around your connectors went, okay? Because like you see here, these are facing forward towards the front of the engine. One, two, three, forward, back, back, forward. And then it's mirrored on this side as well. Here's one of my injectors. What I do is I get the little hose because the big hose are reserved just for the front two. I get my little ferrules. This one goes on the top of the injector. You take your hose and I've been using a little bit of alcohol, just some 90% IPA. Put the hose on the end and then shove it on over the top, nice and tightly. I'm just gonna put it on the side here, give it a right push down onto it. And you shouldn't be able to move it then, okay? And then you put on the other barb here, your other ferrule, you dip the hose back in the IPA. And then again, making sure you know which way around it's going, which is because it's on the front too, it goes forward with the connector. Give it a good shove down, give it a pull. That's not going anywhere. Pretty much that simple. And then you've got all these extra bits to put on, which we'll do in a minute. But first I need to put my final injector on. All right, so this one needs to go here like this because it needs to go forward. Ferrule over the top, dip it in some IPA. There we go, stick that right in there. Give it a pull, ain't going anywhere. Put your ferrule on the end of this one. Dip in the IPA. Ensure that this one's gonna face the right way, which is forward, straight on, over the barbs. Tightly as possible. Give it a pull, not going anywhere. Oh, IPA in my cut. Ow! And that is all of those on the rail. Of course, there's a few more things to do, so let's do those. And that involves all of these I've painted up and all of these, and we need them to secure on the outside. So that's got to be the way they go. That little rectangle bit is to allow for the connector. And of course now, I need to swap them around now because I'm gonna flip it over to do the work. <laughs> and then you flip it, and then they go over onto the outside. As you can see, I didn't bother really to spray the bottom. Um, I kind of thought, I'll just crack on with everything else. And I kind of forgot to spray the bottom, got it all down. And I thought, do you know what? That will do. Anyway, so these mounting brackets, they have to, um, these securing brackets, they have to go on first before you do anything else. Then these metal ones go on and they line up here. There we go. And then the new bit of rubber comes down over the top. And that concludes video one. Induction manifold and cam covers off, injectors removed, tested and overhauled. And in the next video, putting it all back together again. In the next video, I'll also attempt to get the banjo bolts back in without removing the engine, as suggested by practically everybody I've talked to about it. Thank you very much for watching the video, really appreciate it, and please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you have liked the video, and hopefully in the next video we will have the car running, because I also have to work on my Audi S4, because it's making a funny noise and I need the lift.